what we do is we fix the root cause of aging and then the downstream symptoms, loss of memory and other age-related diseases are then alleviated. So Welcome to the first episode of House of Longevity podcast. Today, I'm going to talk with Alan Graves, the CEO of the England-based health and longevity research company and supplement maker, donotage.org. We'll discuss why he founded the company, the company's focus on science over profits, and what he believes should be the ethical standard for every supplement maker on the market. So sit back and enjoy our conversation. And don't forget to leave a comment below and share this video with a friend. Now, let's get into it. It's good to finally meet you, Alan. This is uh, Alan Graves, CEO of donotage.org, a health and longevity research organization, a supplement company, and uh, they seem set to take over the world in at least in that area, what would lead you to start a company uh, looking for the answers uh, about longevity and anti-aging at such a young age? <clears throat> well, I mean, first of all, it's not just me. You know, the, the professors and scientists are what really drives our organization forward. I just make sure everything runs smoothly. Um, you know, we now have facilities in many different continents. So that's, and you know, we serve the entire globe. So that's easier said than done. But, you know, we also have a team in various different places. And so it's not just me. Um, but, but ultimately, the, the reason for Do Not Age is because consumers did, just didn't have a place where they could go to trust, that they could trust for their wellness products. Um, and, you know, people use us because we're a health research organization. Um, because they know that if there's a product on do not age.org, then it actually works. It's been tested. Uh, we make sure things work before we provide them. Uh, which is, I think, different to maybe a traditional supplement company where they would provide whatever anybody would buy. <laughs> right. I noticed that um, that's kind of uh, one of your things on the, the website mainly is more about the research on the homepage. Yeah. It's more about the science and about getting as many people educated and involved and taking products that uh, actually do work, do what they say, and actually have the... Uh, product inside the pill <laughs> unlike a lot of other companies that out there well yeah that, i mean that's that's a, that's a whole other ball game is, is you know the vast majority unfortunately of supplement companies out there don't provide what even what they say is on the label um and then of course there's another level to that which is then the ones that are good in terms of they provide actually what they say they provide will often provide things that don't work or maybe in the wrong dosages and things like that um, because they're either guessing or what they're usually doing is going on price. Um, Fisetin, or Fisetin, as you may know it, is a good example of that. Ours is, I think, 400 milligrams per capsule. And you know, because of that, it's now quite a high price. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas uh, most supplement companies before us would work backwards. And go, okay, how much would people be prepared to spend on this? Say $20, $25, right? And then they'll work backwards and say, okay, we can afford to put 50 milligrams of Fisetin in. And right. that's just... That's ridiculous to us. Um, you know, we're, we're going to do what's best for the health outcome. Um, and, and then, of course, try and get the price as reasonable as possible. So, uh, you know, we've had, we had that. I mean, not so much now, but originally when we when we were first starting out, we had a lot of people sort of say, hey, I'm used to paying $25 for physics. And why is yours $80 or whatever it is? Um, and, of course, the answer is because when you look at it milligram for milligram, ours is actually a much better value. Right. Uh, and yeah, you do need a little bit more. So, I mean, I guess what I was asking you was, um, okay, so what is your background then? If it, if it, uh, to, to lead you to this, you know, you're 34, so, 33, sorry, you're 33. And, uh, it seems yeah. like it's a bit of a family affair as well. Um, uh, no, not really. I mean, it's, you know, I, we, we have a, a few of my family members that are employed, but that they're, they're sort of more in admin roles. Um, we do not age basically <laughs> the reason for my involvement was because I started feeling the effects of aging earlier than most people would, um, due to lifestyle and my decisions. Um, and that, that's the good thing and the bad thing about aging is, mm. uh, you know, over 80% of it is completely up to you and what you do in your environment and, and all the, and the decisions you make. Um, and I didn't make good decisions in my, for a long time. 
um, I travel the world doing lots of bad things that we all know are bad. Um, but eventually that, that caught up with me and I started feeling the effects of aging. And, and then once I realized that aging was malleable, because that's another thing, as I was brought up being told aging just happens. You go gray, you go bold, you get a bit fat, you do that, you know, these things happen. You get Alzheimer's, you start forgetting things. Sounds like you're describing me. <laughs> um, and then when I found out that aging was malleable and there was things you could do about it, I was like, wow, why isn't everybody working on this? Um, and then of course, got to speak to scientists and professors, which I can now call friends, which I'm very lucky to do. Um, and, and work on it and work on solving aging every day. What we do is we fix the root cause of aging and then the downstream <laughs> symptoms, loss of memory and other age related diseases are then alleviated. So right. rather than going, okay, we're going to do something for memory. We do it for aging. And then because without aging, we don't have these issues. Uh, as far as uh, the company, you know, you seem to be growing well, let's just say your product line is, seems to be growing pretty fast. Uh, do you foresee uh, going public or having to seek out investors or partners in the future? No, no, we, we can't keep up with the growth. Um, and I guess that's what happens when you do things ethically the right way and uh, provide ingredients that actually work. And so it's, it's exponential. And like I say, we've got all these new facilities in all these different places uh, and it's great. We're, we're struggling to keep up with it. We had, we had some moments where we couldn't even keep things in stock despite all these uh, new facilities, which I think is a great thing, but it also means that, you know, we don't need large investors. We don't need partners. So I doubt it. I can't see us going public either because when you go public, your responsibility is then your number one responsibility has to be shareholders. Right. And for us, for us, our number one responsibility is, is you know, funding more research and ultimately consumer health. Um, in the current setup, we have more control and we can fund more research with, with this model. Right. You don't have to uh, listen to your shareholders and just say, there's more profit and more profit and yeah, more profit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then when your share price goes down, it affects your ability to fund more uh, research. <laughs> So speaking yeah, of those uh, those kind of things, uh, your expansion and um, everything, what are some of the biggest moves Do Not Age has made lately? Uh, overseas production, logistic, logistics facilities, et cetera. Okay, so we have a USA facility, a mainland Europe facility, uh, working on an Australian facility, facilities in the Middle East. You know, we serve every single country on earth. And, you know, it all started in the UK. And it has since expanded you know, way beyond what anybody could imagine. Um, and this now are is, these uh, you know, are these all sorry are these all production facilities or logistics yeah. or a combination? Yeah, it's a it's a combination. Uh, ultimately, we're going to have uh, production and logistics in all of those places, and probably more eventually. Um, but at the moment, it is a combination. As I say, you know, it, it, it's an ongoing process. We've just finished with the USA. We're working on the mainland Europe one now. We already have ship. We've had shipping set up in mainland Europe for a long time because of Brexit. But <clears throat> the manufacturing is actually going to be uh, set up in mainland Europe, probably by the start of 2024. And it's currently in England? Yep, it's in well, U UK and US is what we have at the moment up and running. Okay, gotcha. Um, what's the uh, first of all, how long have you been the CEO? How, how old is the company? Uh, the company, I think, is like 2019. So 2019, that okay. <laughs> that's, that's pretty young still. Not even, maybe four years. Maybe. Four years, yeah. The, yeah. Um, what's been the biggest headache for you as CEO in this uh, time? Biggest headache. Would it be uh, uh, legal, compliance, logistics? Uh, or like a good headache where it's like uh, running out of product. No, no, I, I think all those things because there's an easy solution to them. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't class that as a big headache. Um, a lot, yeah, a lot of those kind of headaches are also linked to because we're growing and doing so well. So I, I couldn't possibly describe that as a headache. I think that's the best headache you could ever have. Um, 
you know, the bigger we get, the more people we help, and that's our mission. What is the biggest headache? Uh, okay, so I would say probably getting people to understand what the difference is between a health research organization and a supplement company. Because from a consumer standpoint, it's obviously the researchers and scientists now. From the consumer perspective, I think what people see is our website, the consumer facing do not org, and then they see a supplement company's website and they, they go, oh, I can get something from here, I can get something from here. And they see it in the same bracket in their head. And so explaining to people, um, I suppose what we're trying to do is tell people we're the best because we are the best for their health. And whilst everybody else is also trying to tell them they're the best when they're not the best. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, I um, guess it's uh, it's convincing convincing everyone that you are not just one of the other uh, horses in the race that you're you're doing something different. You know, maybe yeah, there are exactly. one or two other companies that are that are trying to provide uh, the research along with the product. Yeah, and they're not actually carrying out the research, and they don't test their products before they do it. And most of them will just sell what people will buy. Um, right. You know. And, and that's but that's the reason why our loyal uh, members use us because they know that it, so it takes away they don't have to think about it they know if it's on there then then they should have it. Um, it's difficult, you know. Supplement most supplement companies are just like marketing machines. They'll sort of repackage someone else's stuff and they'll sell it to you and say it's going to cure everything or whatever. Um, whereas a health research organization will test everything mm -hmm. first, so you know that you're only getting what works. And yes, the results are very positive, but they're also realistic. You know, aging is a slow process and reversing aging is also a relatively slow process. Um, I guess, and, and it's something we've avoided. It's a good question, actually, by the way. Um, <laughs> it's, it's something we and me in particular have avoided because it, we, I just focus on making sure everything we provide is the best. And that's kind of done well for us so far. But I still think there's a big... Uh, knowledge gap in terms of getting people to understand what the difference is between a health research organization and a supplement company. And the main reason I want people to know that is because if every single person started using Do Not Age, guess what the supplement, the old school supplement companies would have to do? They would have to become health research organizations. And then you have right. every supplement company in the world pumping money into research. We're going to solve aging tomorrow instead of in 20, 30 years, you know? And when I say solvage, I mean completely, because at the moment we can slow it down, we can reverse it a bit, cert six activator, things like that. Um, but if, if we want a, a complete, you know, 21 again, then we're gonna need more money into research. So in short, I know there's been a very long winded answer, so I apologize. That's fine. Um, I think in short, the easiest way for me to say it is this. If the most important thing to you is to extend your healthy lifespan, then you should use do not age.org. That's probably the easiest way I can explain it to people. Okay. Now, uh, I right along those lines, my next question had to do with uh, the quality guarantee. Um, do you think the kind of rigorous testing that you guys do should be the standard or even mandatory in the, in the industry? And um, now I'm going to say the initial pushback against the this kind of testing will be, well, it costs too much. And you have to you have to push those those costs to your to the consumer, and I have a feeling that you're going to tell me that those costs would probably be less than five percent increase, probably. Um, well, it depends, doesn't it? Because you you test each batch, so it depends how big your batch is. So now, because of the size of our batches, the testing is a tiny percentage, and it, it doesn't it doesn't make it you know, We don't see it, we don't feel mm -hmm. it. But I still remember the early earlier days when you would go oh god it's a 250 dollar bill going out this is this is big obviously you know you, you still do it because you, you it's the right thing to do but you know it does feel big so i understand why you might say that but i wouldn't it's not a valid pushback um what i would say to these sort of supplement companies reduce your marketing spend hmm. yeah you know well or whereas get, uh... we have this huge percentage of, of profits going to research <clears throat> Theirs is a similar size percentage, and it's just marketing spend. Um, right. And wouldn't, wouldn't the world be great if everybody just moved that to research? 
yeah. from that help. And and at um, least testing, so there's a higher level of confidence. You know, you yeah, get a lot of people I, who say uh, flat out, like, supplements don't work. Supplements are a scam. You're just buying expensive piss, you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, and I understand why, that you know, the vast majority of supplements don't work. The vast majority of supplement companies are rubbish. I get it. I understand why some people would just go <clears throat> forget that whole industry. Um, but, you know, we have, do not age.org has improved the supplement industry quite a lot, but ultimately I'm, for me personally, I'm not going to rest until we've got genuine copycats that are doing health research. Um, right. I don't mean copycats like that. We already see trying to copy our products and all that stuff. We get, you know, we get that they're bottom feeders, but I mean, genuine copycats where they go okay well what do not age started four years ago and now they're this huge global organization maybe if we follow what they did we could also do that and it's very you know it's very possible it's very doable and that's what i want people to do um and to try and actually focus on doing the right thing and you know so would, I, that mean people... your, would that mean so, your answer to the question should uh should uh, third-party testing be mandatory? Would that be yes or maybe not? Because I know, you know, we have organizations like the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S. who slow things down, screw things up. Uh, I would go further than that. I would go further than that and say human testing with your products hmm. should be required. If every, imagine that, right? Every supplement company <clears> before they before they could launch a new supplement had to take fifty people and test their blood, give them a supplement, test their blood again, and give them feedback questionnaires. First of yeah. all, we get some great data points. Secondly, we'd it would stop ninety nine percent of the crap supplements that we see on the market, because if you have to go through all that costly, lengthy process you're not going to do it unless you think the product's going to work. Right. Yeah. Um, that's why I would do rather than just, uh, third party testing, which is, uh, I mean, it should be the bare minimum really. I mean, it does give automatic like, uh, confidence to the consumer, you know? Uh, yeah, no, I understand, I understand that, but ultimately I think you should have that, but you should also then have human testing as well. Thanks for watching. If you haven't given this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel, please do that now. And check out my link to donotage.org in the description. And use coupon code STARK for 10% off every purchase of the highest purity supplements on the market.